Good morning, Swift. This is Warren Ho representing the Swift Board. Pastor Vincent and the Board are so glad you can join our Swift family on this Lord's Day, the 28th of June. Uh, believe it or not, it has now been more than five months since we have been able to worship together in person, but we are thankful for signs of progress here in Shanghai. We look forward to having our senior pastor, Vincent, back in Shanghai soon, and to worshiping our God together in person in God's timing. But while we wait on the Lord, may I encourage all of us to see how we can help each other persevere. As always, there are ways you can do that in the WeChat Bulletin and on the SwiftFamily.com website. Devotionals, online meeting announcements, and information on giving are all right there. And since the alert level is low in Shanghai, and many more of us are here in the summer than would be otherwise, let's see how we can get together with others to listen and pray with each other. I know that I just had the most encouraging meal and prayer with another longtime Swift couple, and um, I hadn't seen them for five months, uh, but I just wanted to pass that blessing on, that spirit of encouragement on. Our call to worship today comes from Psalm 18, verses 41 to 50, the end of the psalm. David writes of his enemies, They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine as wind-blown dust. I trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from the attacks of the people. You have made me the head of nations. People I did not know how... No, now serve me. Foreigners cower before me. As soon as they hear me, they obey me. They all lose heart. They come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. Let's pray. Dear Lord, you deliver us with your mighty power, but also by giving us power to fight our enemies to the end. We need your strength now for the long haul in fighting this pandemic against our enemies of hopelessness, against discord in our families, our church, our community, and in the nations, and against death and sickness and other losses. We adore you, Lord, for caring about us and your whole creation, that you breathe your spirit into your people to empower them and to rescue them. We confess to you that we are tired and sometimes hopeless, that we see our enemies arrayed against us, the injustices and the sicknesses and the divisions, and we feel tired and defeated. How long, Lord, will this world suffer? How long will this pandemic last? Thanks, Lord, that you have not abandoned your people. You give strength to King David and to us to fight, and you ultimately gave victory to David's descendant, Jesus, who conquered sin and death once for all. Give us a measure of that strength today, the spirit of the new creation to give us hope while we wait for this pandemic to end and for your justice to make all things new ultimately. In Christ's name we pray, amen. I'll never
It's very nice to see you all in the Sunday morning and we can worship together. And before we start, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you so much for wonderful grace, for all your protections, for all your guidance, for all your provision, and for all the healing to our Lord this time. And Lord, as what Brother Warren mentioned it, we've been apart for over five months. So Lord, may you continue to bless us as we don't know how long this will last. And also let us remember each other's pray for each other's in this very meantime and lord we pray for all those who will be leaving shanghai or who already left shanghai uh, for a new chapter of their life for a, their new journey lord may you be with them bless them with your courage your love your joy and peace let them have your wisdom to know how to settle uh, in a new place and also knowing that you've been always with them. And also, Lord, also let them know that SWIFT is not limited and restricted in the place or premises. Lord, SWIFT is a spiritual family that is established by you. Lord, let us understand that we are always a member of SWIFT, no matter where we are. Let us remember each other and also let our bondings, our relationship, last for eternity. Lord, and also may you humble our hearts at this very moment so that we can open up ourselves to listen to your word, repent from all our transgressions and sin, and transform to be more Christ-like. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. 
Today we're going to continue on the story of Jacob. Last week we talked about Jacob's son did a really violent uh, act on destroying the whole city of Shechemite. And actually after that, Jacob and his family settled in Shechem. And in here, as what I show it on the title of today's sermon, Jacob returns to Bethel. It's all because God told Jacob that he needs to return to Bethel. <coughs> in verse 1, it said, Then God said to Jacob, Go up to Bethel and settle there, and build, on, build an altar there to God, who appeared to you when you were fleeting from your brother Esau. Because if we go back to uh, chapter 28, Jacob met God in that place, originally called uh, Lux. And once Jacob met the Lord, he, he named that place Bethel, and he said, Lord, if you protect me, give me all the, all the, fo all the food, all the clothes, I will return to, you, return to this place, I will worship you. I'm going to mention it and show you the scripture later. Uh, but in here, basically, that God gave him a reminder, Jacob, why you settle in Shechem? You don't return to Bethel. And Shechem, actually just about 15 miles away from Bethel. It's not far away. But, but Jacob, is, he settled in, in Shechem instead of going to meet God in Bethel. So God gave him a reminder. So Jacob, you need to go to Bethel, settle there, build an al altar, and focus in me. Uh, many times, I think, brother and sister, we always want to experience, experience God. We always tell God, God, I want to experience you. But many times, we forgot the most important thing to begin all this experience is to able to hear from God. Here, Jacob said us a good example. He heard from God. He and God told him exactly what he needed to do. So how many of us that we have experienced such things of we we hear from God clearly what we need to do? Maybe, maybe not I'm not talking about like God give you all the details you need to buy a ticket to somewhere at what day and you need to meet someone or what to do. I'm talking about that when when you make a big decision in your life or or when you're living your daily living, have you ever experienced a time that God talked to you and give you enough information or directive that you know you need to take action? Without that, then probably sometimes it's hard for us to experience God because we don't, we don't know what to do and where to go. So this is important for Jacob that God talked to him. So he heard from God, now is what you do, what, what you need to do. So good that Jacob, he, was, he take actions. He respond to God's calling immediately. So in verse 2, he says, So Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him. So Jacob heard from God, and then he thought, he, he, he took action and told his family what to do. I, I read a little sharing from a father he said, uh, uh, because I, I, I like the story because I can sympathize with that. He said, um, many times he find out, his, I mean, teaching his son is tough. I mean, many times he, he told his son just simple as like, clean his room. His son will respond, uh, yes, yeah, I will do it. But then he will probably take a long time. I understand it because it happened to my daughter too. Uh, whenever you, I ask her to do something, he, he respond with, he, he, she will not say no, but she will many times that will take like forever, forever to get it done. I think many parents will experience the same thing to your children. And this father said, um, his, he experienced a lot of those. His son uh, told him, yes, I will do this, but it, it, it hardly happened. So it take a long time for, it to, for him to do that, to do that. Um, to do that. Um, so, but then he said, after his son graduated from high school, and then his son joined the Marine Corps. And one day when the father picked up his son after the boot camp, 
and his son share with his father. He say, Dad, I now I I really appreciate all the teaching that you you been you had taught me before, and I start to understand what they mean, especially now I understand what now really means. I think now is very important, right? I mean, when you hear some directive, it's not a matter of you, you heard it and you understand it, but you respond with your action. And Jacob did that. And brother and sister, if you ask God to talk to you, to show you the way, to show you His will, one of the most important things is you have to be prepared to take action immediately, to respond to God's calling. If it's not, then why bother to ask God to, to reveal Himself to you? So it's very important to take action. And what uh, Jacob uh, need to do in, in taking action? So uh, Jacob told his family, get rid of the foreign gods you have with you and purify yourselves and change your clothes. So if you summarize it with uh, points, you can see three things that Jacob told his family to do. Get rid of the idols, purify yourself, change your clothes. And if you, if you notice what I just mentioned in verse 1, God just told Jacob to go to Bethel. But Jacob understand what it means. Or Jacob understand what he need to do before he returned to Bethel. They need to purify themselves. They need to bury their own idols. So this is, that's why I mean, in the, earlier I said, when you hear from God, maybe sometimes it's not necessary to hear all the details. But when God talk to, talk to you, He give you enough for you to know what to do. So in, in here, God didn't mention about burying all, the, all their own idols. But Jacob know this is the first thing they need to do. They need to rid, rid of all the foreign gods, all the idols. And then they need to purify themselves. Basically, take a, I, we believe it's kind of like uh, take a bath clean themselves, right? Purify themselves, and then change new clothes. It, the clothes is not going to sanctify them, but it's a s symbolic action to Jacob and his family that they change, they purify themselves. They forsake all their idols, what they, 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 they bury their desire, their own desire, and they're willing to change and put on a new clothes. A new, in the New Testament, that's what Paul, say, Paul said too, right? We need to put on a new clothes as a new, new person in Christ. This is a similar concept. And, and in here, they know that what's going to hinder, hinder them is those idols. So, brother and sister, if you want to experience God, I think one of the most important and another important thing is for us to recognize uh, what what's are the obstacles which are hindering us to get closer to God. Of course, I, I believe most of us, we don't have a physical foreign God in your home that you still worship. But maybe other things like your job, like your family, like your career, like job is different from career, right? Job, maybe you, you do that for make a living. But career, it, maybe you can get self-satisfaction through your career because you, you feel like you're somebody. So that's why many people, will, after they retire, they feel like uh, a, a different person. They feel like they're not important because they gain their value or self-esteem through their career. So maybe I was saying maybe maybe for you, I mean maybe uh, uh, video games, maybe your look, maybe friendship, maybe anything according to to the Bible, anything that you put higher priority than God, those things become your idols, or anything that's going to hinder hinder you to get closer to God, that's your idol. 
So what Jacob did, he bury, bury all the idols. So brothers and sisters, maybe we need, we need to do the same. We need to examine our spiritual home, which is our heart, find out all the foreign idols in our heart and then bury them and then purify ourselves and put on the new clothes. And let's move on. And, and after they do that, so, um, so they, oh yeah, they, they gave Jacob all the foreign gods they had and the rings in their ear because like that, that's a symbol. Many times they, they wear that, it means it is symbol, they, they, they worship gods. And Jacob buried them under the ark at Shechem. So, so this is what they do. They, they take the action in response to God's calling. And then they, they went there and built an altar. So this, this is verse 3. I mean, earlier I read verse 4. So although may, maybe you feel like it's um, chronologically, it's, it's not right. But actually, uh, in the scripture, it mentioned Jacob told his family. So to first, to bury all the idols. So they did that. And, and this is the order from Jacob. Then come, let us go to Beth, the fell where I will build an altar to God, who answer me in the day of my distress, and who has been with me whenever I have gone. So this is what Jacob told them, and they did, they built an altar there. So Jacob and all the people with him came to Lux, that is Bethel, in the land of Canaan. There he built an altar, and he called the place El Bethel. So for Bethel, he changed it, the name called El Bethel. The fell mean mean house of God, and El Bethel mean God of the fell. So, so if you really want to translate in English, it would be like God of house of God. So, so in here, Jacob tried to emphasize he is God. He is God. He is the Almighty One, and He's the only one. This is the place I encountered Him. And this is the place I built an altar and worship him. And in the old days, when we talk about altar, altar is basically it's a place for them to worship God. They build that through stone. They stack stone. Uh, and, and, and they they for that the altar is for them to give sacri to sacrifice um, the animals to God and also to worship God. So this is symbol, this is a place, this is symbol that um how they, this is a symbol that they connect to God through the altar. So, brothers and sisters, do you have an altar in your heart that you know this is the place that I worship God? I'm not talk about I'm not talking about um a Zhuan Tang, like like a church premises or the church you you're attending if you're not in China right now. I'm not talking or I'm not talking about the, the, uh, the pulpit. Some people look at the pulpit or the Holy Communion desk as a sacred um, item that you, you connect to God or that's an altar to them. No, I'm talking about do you have an altar in your heart that you can connect to God? So um, I'm going to share uh, anyway in WeChat if, uh, uh, if you guys see it later. Uh, last week, I don't know how many of you that you have noticed I haven't sent out the daily devotion material because I've been I, I have, have been doing that for over two months I talk to God I pray to God or I, I question God basically I have doubt I, I don't know how many people really um, take up the materials and do it in a daily basis it, it takes some time to prepare the materials so um, last week, I tried to sort of like give a test. So um, so uh, I, I, I sort of like, okay, let's say I don't uh, publish any daily devotion materials. Like I don't even mention it. And see, is, it, is there anyone ask me about that? And um, praise the Lord, God answered my question. And Ian, uh, he sent me a message a few days ago. He said, uh, pastor, people, I have some people ask, uh, uh, are we going to have daily devotion anymore? And what happened to it? 
So I, I praise the Lord. I explained to Ian what, why I did that. And also I praise the Lord. That Lord, you answer my question. So um, I'll continue to do the daily devotion because people ask. And why is it important? Because it's not that because Pastor Vincent, he wrote a daily devotion you need to follow. Uh, it's important. The reason I did that, because actually there's lots of materials um, in the market you can get, right? But I just want to show you well, in Swift, we, we encourage people to read God's Word in daily. And basically, I give you easier time because I only give you a devotion, devotional material from Monday to Friday. Uh, so you can take a break on Saturday and Sunday, right? Uh, but what I try to say is, like, what I try to teach is we need to connect to God through the God's Word, through prayer. So we, you still need to pick up prayer items from our bulletin to pray to God in a daily. And that's where we should place our altar and that's how we can worship god and connect to god not weekly but daily we need to have our altar to worship god to connect to god and hopefully you will pick up the devotional materials and if you don't like it you can pick up your own but no matter what every day sacrifice your time in, on the altar to worship our Lord and let's continue and take a look uh, as what I mentioned uh, Jacob called the place El Bethel and it, 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 he, he really recognized that God is God and he's the only God and and when we talk about worship I think to, I want to give you a, a border a border definition of worship many times I find out um, not not in Swift or not in Swift only, I would say. Many churches, we, we have a concept of, uh, in the church usually nowadays, uh, contemporary or, or um, even traditional worship we do, but the contemporary is more clear that we do the praise, we sing the song in the beginning for 20 minutes to half hours, and then we have uh, offering or, or sermon and then offer, offering afterward. No matter what, we sort of like cutting the the worship into uh, praise and sermon. And many times people will, will, will even call the praise, the singing time is a worship time. So when they talk about I'm worshiping God, they basically talk, they, they only referring to the time of singing the hymn. And, and this, I, I'm not trying to challenge <laughs> the terminology, but I think technically and biblically, we should extend it to the extent of not a uh, worship if we talk about worship service worshiping god is the whole piece when you enter the sanctuary or even when you start driving from uh, or, 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 or commute to the church that's the beginning of worship some people even define when you're preparing your offering at least the day before that's the beginning of worship when you go to bed earlier on Saturday, Saturday night because you want to prepare yourself to worship. That's the beginning of worship. But at least when you enter the sanctuary, that's the beginning of worship. And the worship last, worship service, or your, your, the, your worshiping God in the sanctuary, last till you receive the benediction. The whole thing is worship. Even listening, listening to God's word is worshiping God. Because worship is not only you say how good God is. Worshiping is you recognize God and listen to Him, connecting to Him. That's worship. It's two, it's two ways. It's interactive. So if we extend it even further, we can say we should worship God in a daily basis, every single minute. And that's what we mean. It doesn't mean that we need to sing songs all the time. You, you, you see what I'm trying to say, right? If we, you say it's only singing is worshiping, then on the other hand, we say we worship God on a daily basis. So it doesn't mean you need to worship, you need to sing 24 hours, 24 7, so in order to worship Him. Worship Him is recognize God's presence and be in His presence. So in your workplace, in your home, I mean, even in your bathroom, you can worship God. You recognize, you meditate His word, you pray to Him, you even sing. Some people sing in the bathroom. Uh, 
you, you, you sing to him, all this come together. And also, even situation of toughness, challenge in your workplace, and you find, you recognize God be with you. That's the time you can also worship and sing hallelujah to him. So worship should, should not be limited and restricted to 20 minutes of singing time in the worship service. It should not be limited into that one hour time of a worship service. It should extend to every single minute in your life when you're awake, you are worshiping God. And worship service is, is the time that we all come together to worship God in a united spirit. And, and that's why we call it congregational worship. And also, worship it also, also is that you, you respond to God in your daily worship. So daily when you experience the greatness of God, so we all come together to, to give all His due glory and worship Him and glorify Him. God, you're so great to us throughout the, the, the whole week. But also at the same time, worship is for us to get close to God, to be energized, to receive the strength and courage to face the coming week because we encounter God. We got closer to Him. So the coming days, we should live we, we should be living as the disciples who, who are closer to God one day at a time. So this is what worship means. So in here, I think Jacob did a great thing. He named the place El Bethel. So now it's not only Bethel, it's El Bethel. God, I recognize now, this is really the place I encounter you. I recognize now, you are the only God. You are the almighty God. You're the God of house of God. So this is what worship really means to Jacob. And, and I want to refer back to uh, Genesis chapter 28. Because in there, uh, I mentioned many sermons ago, that when Jacob flipped from his house, uh, <coughs> fled from his house uh, with nothing, he met God. And remember, I, I, in that sermon, I mentioned Jacob saw a letter that uh, angels go up and down from that letter. And, and this is a time that before he met uh, Rachel, before he, he got all wealthy, I mean, this is like he had nothing. He, in that place called Lux, he met God. And he said, he said to God, if God will be with me and will watch over me on this journey I'm taking and will give me food to eat and clothes to wear so that I return safely to my father's household, then the Lord will be my God. And this stone that I have set up as a pillar will be God's house. And of all that you give me, I will give you a tenth. So this happened almost 30 years before Jacob's return at, at what happened in chapter 35. After he, he, he have two wives, have less, let me try to be precise, 11, 11 sons because uh, Benjamin was not born yet uh, in chapter 35. Uh, so, well, actually in chapter 35, but later. But the later part we're not going to mention today. So, uh, so, after all this, after he worked for his uh, Leah for seven years and Rachel for another seven years and then another ten years for his wealth and, and then now he settled in Shechem for a, a, a few years and so it's a, 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 almost like 30 years uh, ago, I mean 30 years ago when he mentioned this to God. So if, so basically he say, if God, remember I showed this to you, right? If God will be with me, if God will watch over me, if God will give me food to eat, if God will give me clothes to wear, if I can return safely, then all this. So at this time, finally God told him, okay, I did all this. So Jacob, return to Bethel so that you, you, you recognize what you promised me, promised me over almost 30 years ago. So what Jacob promised, the Lord will be my God. This place will be God's house, and I will give you a tenth. So brother and sister, I, I, I don't know um, 
each one of you how you uh, experience God. I, 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 I like to listen to your story. If you have time, we should get together so I can hear every one of your testimony. I want to know how you met God. But those experiences are very important. You have to remember the time you met Him. You have to remember the commitment uh, you make to Him. I, I truly believe I did that too. When I first met Him, I, I accepted Him as my Savior. I make a commitment, right? I, I make a commitment that He be my Savior. He be my Lord. When I got baptized, I make a commitment, God, I want to be your true disciples. I want to follow you. And, and throughout my life, I have so many but fell in my life. When I study, uh, when I receive His calling, when I'm in my lowest time of my life, when I, uh, when I finally find out that uh, God called me to be a pastor, uh, to pastor churches, I, I, I make commitments. I make promise to God. But also, that's the time I hear from God. I experience God. That's my befell. And brother and sister, find your befell. Find it. Remember how you encounter God and put it in your daily living. Remember that and return to it. Maybe, some, maybe you've been a Christian for a long time or after you become a Christian, you, you have so many things happen to your life that, that making you forgot about your befell. But brother and sister, find your befell. Remember how you encounter God. Remember instance that God talked to you and you have respond to him. And also, maybe even though you, you forget about that, I believe, I truly believe God loved you so much. He would do the same thing as what he did to Jacob. He will remind, he will remind you like what he did to Jacob, he reminded Jacob. But it's very important that when God talks to you, you need to hear his voice. Don't let your surroundings, don't let your desire, don't let your idols in your life that affecting your, your hearing ability, your spiritual hearing ability from God. Maybe today, if this, this message really touched your heart, after, after the worship, let's pray to God. Ask God, God, I want to find my befell. I want to hear from you so that I can build my altar again and I can worship you. I can build a true relationship bonding to you. Brother and sister, are you willing to do that? Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for wonderful grace that you are not only saved us, you are not only giving us eternal life. You want to build a close relationship, relationship to us. Lord, maybe we lost our profile throughout all this time, throughout the time that we've been focused on our job, our career, our family, our desire, our love, our interests, even some idols we haven't recognized. Lord, forgive our sin, forgive our transgression. Let's repent. Let's find our befell. Let's rebuild an altar in our heart so that we can connect to you day by day. We can get closer to you every minute. And also in this very tough situation, in this very moment, in this in what's happening to, to, to this world, Lord, let us be a living testimony, living, living witness to the other that God, you are a living and a true God in our life. Lord, let us transform ourselves and be used by you. We pray all this in Jesus' victorious name. Amen. No holding back, I give you everything on my soul, every part.
Thank you for joining us. May you have a great week until we see each other again. And also, hopefully, you can find your befell and build your altar this week. And let's bow our head and receive the benediction.
May the love of our Father, the grace of His Son, Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us from now and forever. Amen. Goodbye, and see you next week.